Um, so, so basically a little bit about uh, the Docker workshop. So initially it's me, Michael and another colleague of ours. Uh, we wanted to also educate uh, the colleagues in our company about Docker. So uh, actually the materials we came up together to help uh, our colleagues thus to have the fundamentals of uh, the Docker uh, experience and also to teach about what is Docker entirely about. Right? So, um, so after that we moved to, uh, so we taught one round in SP, Singapore Poly. And that's why Michael was saying that like, uh, if you guys have Windows and it's a lot diffi more difficult because uh, a lot of students in SP will have Windows issue. I think you will know about it and everybody here will know. So, uh, so thank God that you guys are uh, Mac. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, before that, right, uh, I did a bit of slide. So, uh, okay. So, make sure that you all can see this um, <laughs> when you run. Uh, so, your very first uh, intro to Docker is uh, the command called Docker Run. Okay. So, Basically, when you do that, you get to see a whole bunch of message. This also tells that you have successfully managed to run Docker on your computer with an uh, image called Hello World. Okay? But uh, we explain what's the image, uh, what is the command all about. Okay? So in the next, it's... So, okay, maybe does want to know, like, what have you all heard about Docker? Does to have... Yeah the impression that you all have, what is Docker? So lightweight. Lightweight environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Anything else? It's a wheel with a lot of containers. <laughs> That's another one. Anything else about Docker? What you do here on the local, you can just pop it up. Mm, correct. So that's also another um, beauty or uh, the, the thing about Docker that's why it's so popular is the ability to make sure that your local environment works exactly the same as the other environments also. Anything else? Or oh, it's cool technology, everybody is doing about it, think it's nice to put on the resume, I don't know. Uh, scalability, like, mm -hmm. uh, you're able to scale up. Yes, so, um, so the idea of containers also come from when Google first started. That's how they deploy um, a lot of their services also. They deploy containers across all their thousands of servers. Yeah, so that's also right. Okay, so, so actually Docker is a relatively new technology. Uh, it only started in 2013, okay? And when we say Docker, right, actually Docker is a set of tools uh, that that is being composed together to have Docker. Okay, so if you want to know more about this set of tools, you can look at the Mobi project. This is the it's like the project where these are the tools that Docker use to have what you all have today right now. Okay, so if you are really hardcore, you want to create your own version of Docker, or if you want to do something your own, you can go and check that out. So the reason why a lot of uh, why Docker run more better on Mac is because it runs on uh, this thing called Linux Kit, which naturally says that it runs on Linux. Hence, when you run on Windows, there's a little bit more issue than needed. Okay, so um, <coughs> so like you say, Docker works well with a lot of the other uh, orchestrators. What they call it the orchestrators where they take the containers and then deploy to the rest of the servers. Okay? So there are many, many types of orchestrators around um, to deploy these sets of uh, containers. Uh, you have Kubernetes, which I think you all might have heard about it. Uh, that is very popular. If you know, you know it's like one of the most popular GitHub uh, project. Mesosphere, um, actually is also, Mesosphere actually is used by Netflix, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Apache Mesos is the, uh, the open source project. And then the last one they did, did try, Docker did try to come up with is Docker Swarm. Okay? So these are the few orchestrators. So orchestrators are things like they take your container and then they deploy to all your servers. Okay? That's all the rough idea of how orchestrator works. Okay? So 
So what, what do developers use or what do we use um, before Docker? How do you all code before? Localhost, Localhost? Yeah. okay. So for me, I used to code in VMs. Oh, yeah. yeah, VMs. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, so yeah, that is um, going to explain the difference between a VM and a Docker. Yeah. So basically, if you look at VM, right, this is VM. You have your infrastructure, your computer, and then you have your hypervisor. Hypervisor is like, you can call it like your virtual machine. Right? No, virtual box. Yeah, virtual box. Uh, virtual box is actually lies on top of a hypervisor. Then on top of that, each VM is a guest OS. So you can have Ubuntu. You can run Windows on your Mac in VirtualBox, right? Then you have your guest OS, and then you have all the libraries that you need. And then you, have, you can run your app, right? <coughs> so in very big companies, uh, VM, uh, VMware has like, you can deploy VMs to different servers also. Then you can spin it up. Okay, so that's one way. This is VM. So what's the difference is in Docker, you rely on the, so on top of the infrastructure, you have the host OS. So right now you guys are using Mac, right? Then on top of that, you have Docker. And then everything else is just the library itself, the app. We don't have the guest OS. Okay, so that's why in, in this sense, you can see that, oh, actually to run Docker, it's about faster, lighter weight because you are removing the guest OS itself. It relies on the host OS to run. So that's why it's a lot faster. Okay? A lot, a lot more um, way to spin it up. La. You can spin up more also. So this is the difference in um, VMs, uh, VM and Docker, roughly. La. Okay? So if you all have any questions, just. Um, can just raise up and shout across also can, okay? <laughs> yeah. Mm. So what's the benefit compared to a VM? Okay? It's actually better density, meaning that you can put more containers in a computer than VMs. How many VMs can you spin up in a computer? At most two to three, max. But you can spin up hundreds of containers in your computer. That's still possible. So in terms of that, you can have more density. You can put more apps inside a computer. Yeah. And you can put different kind of apps in the computer also. Okay. So next, faster booting time. Because it doesn't rely on the guest OS. It relies on the host OS itself. So it's a lot faster. To boot up a container, it could be thus. When you run the um, Hello World, how long does it take to run the Hello World? Less than a second. That's how long it runs to, how long it takes to run a container. It also depends on the container size, generally, but it will not take more than one minute or so to run your uh, container. Okay? Well, if you do a VM in relative, you might take, depends, you are booting a Ubuntu VM or you are booting a Windows VM. And it takes a bit longer, la. actually a lot longer. Okay? Better portability also. So I had this, um, when I was uh, working in my previous company, I was coding an application. And then I coded in Docker. And then when the time when we need to move to um, Windows, uh, we actually can just port this uh, Docker image over to Windows and run it also. So it runs perfectly, like no issues. Yeah. Well, you can say that um, for VMs, you also can port. It's not an issue, right? As long as both system has a virtual box, then you still can port over. The difference, I would say, is only in size. Because in your VM, usually you have a, what, 30 gig, 40 gig, right? An image size, at most, what I see these days, the highest I see is about 2 gig only. Yeah. So you can port an image over also. So in terms of that is portability. It's a lot easier. Okay? And then the next thing that is quite common is when you start to use uh, Docker for development, mm, moving forward, you will see uh, also the trend of people using Docker to deploy stuff, like using Kubernetes. 
that's where it works well with your modern CI CD pipeline also. So a lot of cases we use um, Docker to build using CI to build the image. And then using this, we deploy to the rest of the, the ecosystems. So this works very well with the CI CD pipeline also. It's a bit hard when you try to do with VMs, when you try to do a CI CD with VMs. You can do it uh, via Vagrant, I guess you can do that. But a bit more tricky, lah, a bit more work to do. Hmm? Any questions? No? Okay. So why, why is it so popular with uh, developers, right? Okay. Like you say, it's consistent across your dev, QA, and prod environment. And recently, you heard this thing called, which is quite common now, it's called infrastructure as code. Okay? Essentially, what you are doing in Docker is also writing your infrastructure. Whatever that you are writing is going to be infrastructure for your app. Okay? So that's why, and all these are codes that can be put in the Git. You can see the difference and whatnot. Okay? So there's, there, there's many ways to do infrastructure as code. Uh, you have you have other tools like uh, Chef, you have Puppet, you have a lot of ways, but the key is that your infrastructure can be placed in a version control where you can see the difference, you can ensure consistency across all your infrastructures. Okay. So minimum configuration, I guess when you're, because you're on Mac, so you'll enjoy the minimum configuration. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you install Docker, it's relatively easy. Uh, DMG install and then that's it. Then you have this icon that you run, right? So not so much there. But if you use like other stuff like uh, Chef, Puppet, or Ansible, that requires some stuff. Like example for Chef and Puppet, it requires um, some form of agent in the servers to install. So it's a bit more hands-on to install these softwares. Next, okay. Basically, if you say that you're running Docker, it means that you are taking care of the infrastructure also. So it's no longer the time when you can say, oh, I need a server with, uh, oh, I need this uh, server with Ruby installed. I need this server with uh, my SQL or whatever. Right now, the developer is the one deciding or building the infrastructure. So a lot of responsibility now are moved back to the developer itself, the developer that does the application. So it's no longer those days where like, you go tell your IT guys what you want, what app server you should need, what software you should install, and so on and so forth. Okay? Now everything goes back to the developer. Good thing and bad thing. Okay? Yeah, good thing is uh, you get to expose more. Bad thing is that there's a lot more responsibility on you right now to build your application. And also because you are the developer, so you should know how your app should be run and what your app should have so that it can run properly also. So now a lot of these are back to your hands now. Okay. Any questions about this? <coughs> Do you have anything to add, Mike? Sorry, what is the kind of puppet name? Okay, they are configuration tools. So they are like, if you spin up the, uh, if you spin up servers, right? How do you install stuff? It used to be that you go into the server and then you install stuff manually. Whereas with Chef Puppet and Server, it's at, a, at my own computer. I can run this script and then it goes to all my servers, hundreds of them, and install whatever software they need automatically. I don't even need to access the machine myself. Yeah, it's an automated way to install stuff inside the servers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, like everything in life, there's no one silver bullet for everything. Okay. It doesn't mean that Docker can be used. It can be used for everything, but it doesn't mean that it's good case, good use case to be used for everything. So, like everything that we learn, you always need to know what is good to use, what is not so good to use. Okay? For example, if you 
running Windows, our advice maybe mm, if your application requires Windows like uh, IS to run, you're running C sharp, then maybe you don't want to use Docker. Because <laughs> I don't know how you Dockerize Windows inside there. <laughs> okay? So that's also things that you should take note also, okay? Things that you might not want to use it with. Okay, monolithic app. Okay. The reason why I say this is that <clears throat> it everything that's a scale, right? Is a monolithic app is on one end, right? To use Docker, it also implies that you might not want to go into a microservice way of architecture. So the effort might be more than the benefit. To break this app into many pieces, to dockerize it, to split it up. So in the end, you have to weigh whether does the, eff does the effort is more than the benefit or the benefit more. So you have to <coughs> weigh this out also. Okay, and then you don't have a CI CD in place. Okay, but in many things, whatever application is always good to have CI CD in place or solar. Okay, okay, the next thing is you have zero access to the production environment or so. Hmm? Why would that be a problem? Because sometimes you might want to actually that. It's not a problem, it's more of a troublesome thing to do. Yeah. But I know in a lot of cases, like our company, we don't have access to the production environment also. Yeah. So that is more of a troublesome thing to do also. When you want to deploy stuff. Yeah. Okay, so some of the termo terminology that we're going to use uh, when we deal with uh, Docker. Okay, so the first thing that you always hear, it's an image, right? So that's the first thing that when you encounter Docker, you always hear, oh, I have this Docker image, oh, we have this, we have that, image, image, image. So exactly what is an image, okay? So an uh, image is, okay, if you look at the Docker glossary, it's actually a collection of file system change. Okay? So basically, it records down anything that happens in the file system. It records down everything. Okay? It's a layer of changes to the file system that is stacked upon one another. So that you make this change, they'll cache it. Say you, you make a directory, then Docker will, Docker will remember, okay, you make this change as making a directory. Then the next step you do is you put in some file, and then Docker will remember, oh, you put in another file. But they remember the sequence. Okay? So it's basically a collection of steps okay, that is made to the file system. Okay? And the image has no state. Okay? And the image doesn't change. Okay? So again, an image is basically a collection of steps that you make to the file systems. Okay? So that is an image. Okay. The next thing that you hear the most often is containers. Okay? Basically, you can imagine if image is your recipe, then containers are the cake. So to make cakes, you have the recipe. So one recipe can produce many cakes, right? Okay. So think of it this way. Whatever that you write in your Docker image, because it steps, right, make to the file systems, they are essentially your recipe. Okay. At the end of it, you use this recipe to produce containers, which is, in this case, your cakes. Lah. That's why you can use one Docker image to spin up hundreds of cakes. Okay. Okay. Well, I never go and just copy from internet, never go and like credit to don't know who, don't know who. Oops. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> okay, next slide. <laughs> Let's go to the hands on. <laughs> okay, so roughly an idea of how, 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 how Docker is. Okay. Okay, now let's go to the hands on. Okay, so let's go exercise one. Okay, the basic Docker command you all can see it's Docker, and then once you click on this you actually see a lot of stuff, right? So if you notice that Docker is also quite sneaky, that when you install, they pre-install Swarm for you. <laughs> so it's the way to ask you to use their stuff, but it doesn't mean that you need to, but it's just basically all here. Lah. Okay, these are all the commands that you would run, or the things that you might want to check to do so then you can see all this here. So some of the commands that we will often use is build. Okay, this is when we build the image. Okay, the next thing we will use it's okay. This two, this two is often that you will use also. This three. Okay, run is to again run is to use the recipe to bake a cake. Okay, basically to spin off a container. Okay, that is run. That's why when you do docker run hello world, right? Remember the first step that you all did is basically to run a container using the image hello world. Make sense? Okay. And then RM is to remove the containers. If you got 100 cakes, you might want to reduce to 50 cakes so you can remove the containers. RMI is to remove the image itself. Okay, so some of this I can leave to you all to read. Okay, but today we will go through the most uh, commonly used uh, one so that you all have a taste of how is it like. Okay. <coughs> so next thing, so you can use help to. So for example, you have a. So to have a, sp you can sp go to one command and then that dash help. So that will give you a list of other stuff that you can do with it also. Okay. So basically these are the stuff that you can do. You can do a run, you can start and stop the container. You can pause, you can look at the log file, you can do a lot of this. So this is when you want to dig in into each of the commands that you have. <coughs> Next, you can see your Docker version. So it's mine is 18.6. I think yours will be higher, slightly higher than mine. Okay. So there's your Docker version. Okay. You can do Docker info. So Docker info tells you more stuff about what exactly is inside here? <coughs> so it can tell you which. So kernel version it's basically something that every time when you run uh, Docker, it runs on this thing called Linux Kit. Okay, this is the so called that OS that you run, that Docker runs in. Okay, your operating system, basically everything lah. Okay, if you want to really dig down into this is a. Uh, really quite complicated. But this is basically the, the things that you can really look for in Docker. It's good when, when you are running Docker on a server, then you want to know exactly what version that you're looking at, what are the information. Okay. Okay, so next. So basically we do this again. Um, what this command does is Docker run the image name okay so when you do docker run the image name what it does is it using the image it will spin up a container 
okay and run so if you do a docker container ls you see nothing but you do an all then you get to see if you do a docker container ls basically it says all it tells you all the containers that you have run basically all the stop containers so for me okay basically I run a few things and then you can tell you uh, when it exit that means when the container stop okay for you you should see at least minimum one or two right All right and then when the container was created Okay, then you can see the image. This is the image. Okay, and then every time when you run a Docker image, it always will give you a container ID. Remember, one recipe produces many cakes, right? But in the IT world, these cakes are all unique. Okay, they are identified by the ID or by the name. So the names are auto-generated. So you get to see all sorts of names on your Docker container. Okay? So you notice it doesn't download into your into your folder, it looks at your folder, there's no like new files or whatever there. It actually downloads into the Docker daemon, which is uh, what you start, you see the Mac, uh, you see the wheel at icon right? here in the bar. So it's starting in the background, so it's it downloads it locally. Okay. Any questions? Unclear things that you might want to ask. Yes. How what? Sorry? Ah yes, good question. So that is where I'm coming to next. So how do you know what you have downloaded, right? Okay, so the next one is Docker Image LS. So if you do this it lists a series of I have a lot lah, okay? But you all should have hello world only. Right? Okay? So here we'll tell you basically these are the images that you have downloaded. Okay? The next question that you will ask is download from where? Right? Okay, hold that in mind. Oh, okay, I explain that first, okay? Maybe then you So you download from this place called Docker Hub. I don't remember the address, but it's hub.docker.com. Okay? So this is like um, any Ruby developers, um, any JavaScript developers. Ah, okay, this is your NPM. <laughs> okay, uh, your gem. Okay, uh, I don't know Java. Is what, what is this? Maybe <laughs> not. Basically, this is the source of all the image. So, like we did uh, run Hello World, right? So, if you search for Hello Dash World, ah, then you get to see this, right? So I'll explain a little bit more about this. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. So things to note is that like every time when you go to NPM or you go to uh, RubyGem or what, so how do you know what is from that company and how do you know what is not from that company <coughs> or it's, it's from some third party that does this? So official, okay? Official is what Docker and DOS say, correct? This is the correct report, or this is the official report. The rest is some third party stuff. Okay? So if you look at official, hello world, 
you click on this okay and then this is the official rep repo and then basically you see a lot of this and then it tells you the sample output okay so this is where the image is downloaded from okay you don't have to log in to download an image or you don't have to sign up for that matter <coughs> okay so back to this when we download hello world in this one right uh, there's a few things you can see uh, you can see tag you can actually tag an image um, like in, the, in this case what people do they tag a image to a version number okay your recipe you have version 1 version 2 version 3 right so you can tag the same thing the recipe is still called chocolate cake but you got chocolate cake version 1 version 2 version 3 so tag is to do that okay to tag the image with a version or you can tag it with anything okay by default if you don't tag it docker will assume and you will always call it the latest okay this is the default behavior okay. next you will always have an image id okay and this is unique And then when it was created, and then the size, okay, the size of the image, okay. So there are some that is a lot bigger than, okay. So there are different sizes, okay. One thing to note that when you look at this right, then you must be thinking it's like, wow, if I got hundred image, then my hard disk run out of space very fast, right? Okay, it's on two gig, two gig, two gig. Then I got two hundred, then I got two hundred gig already. Okay, so what happens is in every image, remember, it's a layer, right? An image is a collection of layers. So Docker is smart enough to say that if image, Hello World, and Ruby, they share the same layer, they will use the same layer. So they will not duplicate the layers. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So this is an absolute size of this image, but the layers can be shared. Okay? Like recipe R, uh, you have eggs, right? Recipe A, recipe B will both have eggs. So the eggs, these eggs are shared. Yes. Uh huh? Later we'll boil down to the layers. I can show you the layers. Okay. So if you want to see the layer, right, you can do a Docker, I think, inspect. Hello world. Ah, then that's where you come to the image. Okay. So you do Docker inspect Hello World. Mm. <coughs> so this boils down to if you have a bigger image, because this one is only like 18 ki kilobyte, so you only have one layer. Okay, but if you do a like a one gig one, you should see quite a few layers, lah. Okay, so these are different layers. Uh, example would be if I use okay, use Ruby, lah. <coughs> so I do Ruby. So Docker inspect Ruby two point five. Then you see the layers. Ah, uh, this is like your X. Yeah, okay. So if another image sharing the same layer, then Docker will be smart enough to say, okay, this layer also put here. So this layer is a certain size, but it's shared across many other images. That's why when you look at the image, it doesn't, it's not going to tally to say that you plus all them together is just how much Docker is using. Okay? Let's bear in mind that at the end of it, all your layers are, all your image are layered. Okay? So okay, understand? The layer parts are okay. 
So an uh, image has many layers, right? Say that this image right now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight layers. And one layer is an uh, image, a layer is defined as something that changed in the file system. Okay, so this layer is a series of commands that happens to change the file system. Okay, so Docker is smart enough to say that if whatever command that is in this layer, another image is also using the same command, exactly the same thing. The output is exactly the same. And then Docker will say, okay, use this layer to be shared with another image. So in that sense, your size of the image is a lot smaller because it's shared. Okay. So in terms of IT, there's no duplication in that, for that matter. Okay. Because when I first started this, when I look at the Docker image, I got quite shocked lah, because if I have a lot, then I was like, oh my heart, this really gonna run out of space very quickly. <laughs> okay. But it's not, it's not this case, okay? But if that's a good way to tell a boss you need a better computer, then go ahead and <laughs> tell your boss that you need a better computer. Because when you plus, it's quite a lot. Okay? So there are layers. Okay, remember, image are layers. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so um, back to here. Okay, this gives you a series of images okay, that you download from Docker Hub. Okay. Next. Okay, I think we have seen a little bit of this. Okay, Docker LS. So if you just do a LS, what it says it show me the current active running containers. Okay. Right now, if you see nothing, means that there is no containers running in your computer or local host now. Okay? But if you do a dash dash all, like I said before, it shows you everything. Okay, these are containers that is stopped, but not deleted. Okay, remember? Okay, let's try uh, to delete one container. So we do a docker rm. Okay, then my container name is called Serene Jackson, right? If I do this, RM, I, I don't know what's your container name, okay? It's not Serene Jackson for sure. It can be something else. Okay? So Docker RM, the, con the container name. Can? Can. So you should see a output of the same container name. <coughs> Everybody managed to delete one container? Okay, so to tell the difference, right, right now, to see whether the container is really deleted, we run the command again, docker container ls dash dash all. Okay. You shouldn't be seeing the container that you just deleted. Okay. So to reiterate this command, this command docker, L, docker container ls dash dash all is to show you containers that is stopped. Okay, but once you deleted the container, it disappears. Okay. Ken? If you look at this, basically gives you all the containers ID. 
is it? Dash AQ. Okay. Remember that's now we do Docker RM the container name. You actually can do Docker RM the container ID also. Okay. You can kill off or you can remove the container via the name or the ID because these are unique. Like many things, there's always one or more, more way to do things. So that's why we do a Docker container LS, right? We also can do a Docker PS. It's the same. This one also shows you the active containers. This command is the same as Docker Okay, same. They are the same. I think for because when it first started, I think it's Docker Container LS. Then when they upgrade the version, and then they decided, oh, let's do another one, but they want to keep the old one. So then you have again multiple ways to do things, lah. Okay. Oh, PS. Ah, I was so forgotten. But for backward compatibility, I don't know which one came first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think they did some reorganizing of all the uh, sub commands so they can more like organize. <laughs> 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 Specifically, uh, there are flags that are being used more often and commonly, and they just create a command that's going to be for like pursuing an address of that or that or that. Oh, yeah, so yeah, that's not what's the key. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you can also use LIST list, but you know, yeah. So same Docker PS and then there's a Docker PS dash dash or same thing. Yeah. Gives you the same result. Any questions on exercise one? Oh yeah. Wow, that is. Can try that. So, like Michael said, there's another command called Docker prune. I think system, if I'm not wrong. That's prune. Oh. No. Docker, okay, this is how use Docker container prune. So basically, this one tells you that you remove all your stop containers. Oh, that's not, I got a lot, right? So if I press Y, it tells that, da da, it's deleted. Okay, so now if I do a Docker PS that dash all, I have something. Okay. <coughs> Same 67 megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> Good tip. <laughs> you can also do the image prune as well. Oh, yes. But I won't do it on my system, <laughs> but y'all can try it. <laughs> y'all can try it. <laughs> I think it only clears out intermediate. Uh, the untacked one, those. Untacked one. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't try, don't try. Uh, yes? How do you save, like, for example, you modify the certain image, right, or certain thing? How do you save it? Because if you, if you want to, like, do a clearance, you need to make sure that the ones, the, mm. the proper image you want to save, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do you do a clearance? Correct. Good question. That's exercise two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
you ask the right question. So that's why we're going to exercise too also. That's the next step. Okay? The next step is not only we know how to clear the image, but we also learn how to build our image. Okay? That's the exercise too that we are trying to do. Okay? But other than that, concept of Docker, basic image container, uh, PS, uh, can? Okay. Good. okay, so So uh, I mean, let's go to exercise two. I guess this one you have to clone the the, the registry first. Up uh, the registry la, the repo. Have you cloned the repo? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so let's just go to exercise two. Okay. Uh, and then uh, get to your I don't know if I've cloned this. Oops, sorry. <coughs> One second, ah. Huh? Then go to your favorite text editor. Oh, a bit too big. Can you all see? Let me string this a little bit more. Okay, so go to exercise two. Okay, in exercise two, okay, let's create this thing called a new file. And this file you want to call it called Docker file. Okay. So in the exercise two folder, create a file named capital D Docker file with us small f. No extension. Yeah. <coughs> So, why do we want to create this file? Because by default convention, the image or the recipe that we want to build is always called Docker file. Okay, this is by convention. Okay, not small d, not whatever. Okay, it's capital D Docker file. Okay. So, the first thing that we want to do when we want to build an image <coughs> is the first thing we have to ask is what sort of project do we want to build? Okay? In this case, what you are seeing here is a node project okay? in exercise 2. Okay? So, we want to build a node application. Okay? That is our goal. Our goal is to build a node application, a to-do node application. So to have a node application, what's the first thing that we need? Obviously, we need a node library, right? So we can do from. From. Okay? Then we can decide what version of node do we want to use. Okay? So how do we know what version is there? Correct? There's no, there's not 10, there's 9, there's 8, there's whatever. So, this is the good time to go back to eh? here. Your docker hub or hub.docker.com. <coughs> Look for node. And then you see, oh, okay, obviously we only want to take the one from the official. Okay. The reason why you don't take from other people is because you don't know what they put inside there also. <laughs> okay? Unless you read through the Docker files. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so when you click on node, and then you see like, what the shit, like, wow, there's so many of them. Right? How do we choose what is good, what is what? Okay? So, in the world of 
Docker images. Okay. Generally speaking, there's a few types. Okay. The first type is just the version number. Okay. You see this one? 8.11.3. This is just the version number. Then you realize what is Alpine, what is on build, what is slim, what is stretch. Okay. What does all this mean is the size of the image. Okay. So when we want to use an uh, image and deploy it to production, we want to deploy it to our server. We always want the image to be as small as possible so that it is faster to upload, faster to deploy, faster to do everything. Okay? So when we always want to get the smaller image, we always go for Alpine. Okay? Alpine will be the smallest. Okay? The, the, the fat one is always those without any version number, without, without anything. So it does 8.1, 811.3. Without on build, without slim, without stretch, without whatever. Okay? So why are there so many different needs? Because uh, developers, uh, they want to give you all the flexibility. So you get to choose Alpine being the smallest, without any word being the biggest. So everything else is in between. Okay? So how do you make an image as small as possible? Right? Why, why is there so much difference between the size? It's because if you go to the, fat, the most fat one, you have other libraries like curl. Have you used curl? Uh, you have other libraries like curl, you have other libraries like basically some monitoring tools, some system tools that is a good to have. So in Alpine, they strip everything off. Basically, the bare bone that need to run Node, that's all. There's no other tools available. So for development purpose, or for things that we want to build and try, we always want to go with the fattest one. Because there is other libraries inside that we can use also. So now you know this, you basically you can try to download if you're one. Okay. okay, so now we pick one of the... Let's pick which one. Got so many. We got nine one. Uh. No. Maybe let's pick 8.11.3. Okay. So from here, Docker from node. Okay, you specify the image that you want. Okay, and then you specify the version 8.11.3. Okay, so what this says is the very first statement from means when you run this Docker file, please go and find the node image with this tag, okay? So this is what we want. Okay. <clears throat> and okay, the next thing that is good to have is you always like to put maintainer, okay? Who actually maintain this image? Okay, so you can put anything. You can put your email, you can put your name, you can put, okay, you can put anything you want. Okay, this one has, this one is not so much of the Docker will do anything to it. It's more like when somebody else sees this file, then they will know that, oh, this is the dude that write this. Or, huh? Like something like the author. Ah, uh, something like the author, or, yeah. Or if you're going to write a very bad file, then write the one that you don't like, the name here, <laughs> also can. Because nobody knows, okay? <laughs> okay, can? So maintainer doesn't do anything, it only helps in readability, okay, of this Docker file, okay? Next, it's, I also forgotten, let me check. 
exercise two. Okay, let's go through the final. Final is all work directory. <laughs> Okay, what is work directory? <coughs> okay, work directory is like to specify in this image where's the home directory. Okay, okay, the home directory of this image. Essentially, that's what it is, lah. So ah. So if this doesn't exist, then what happened? Okay, Docker will create this for you. Okay, yes. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> can you can actually call this anything you want? Ah, huh? doesn't have to be app or so. Okay. Okay, next. I also forgotten everything already. Next one is, oh, the most important one. <laughs> Look at the remote. Oh, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Next is, you copy. Okay. Okay, what does copy do? Basically, is to tell Docker copy the current directory of where the docker file is okay so if my docker file is in uh, exercise 2 folder what it does it, it does copy everything that is within the exercise 2 folder the same directory where the docker file is okay so if you have nested folders you also copy the nested folder since also okay so copy from where to where this two is inside the container, okay? This is on your local host. This one is inside the image or inside the container. Okay? So we want to copy from your local host current directory where the Docker file lives into the container work directory called slash app. Okay? Next. Let's look at the readme again. Okay, then we run, then we do the next important one is to do this, run. Okay. So run state that please do whatever command you want inside the container okay so those that do uh, those that never do node before this is like bundle install maven build and I don't know what else is this okay this is basically just download all the dependency okay can so run you can specify anything here you want. Okay, in this case, we are just doing npm install. Okay, it's to tell the container, please run whatever command that you want here. Okay, yes. For multiple commands, do we just go to the next? Ah, good question. So, what if you have ten commands you want to run? How? <coughs> so this is where. Remember the layers part comes into the picture. You have one layer, okay? Every line that you write in the Docker is one layer, okay? So if you have if you have 10 commands, what usually people do is, if these commands are related, they will put everything in one line. So for example, I have another one called, uh, for example, another one called npm install two or npm clean, okay? like that. And then if you want to run another command, you do a and then. It's just like how you do in Linux. When you want to pipe commands, you do a and then. Okay? So what this does is you're telling Docker, please run this command in one layer. Okay? 
as opposed to run npm clean. You can do this also. It's not wrong. It's just that you are creating multiple layers. That's all. Okay? And why layers are important is we'll go through this later. Okay? Just bear in mind that the it's important to always group commands that is related into one line. Okay? What if you have a file that runs everything at one go? Then you can run the bash script here, lo. not run the bash script. Lo. Ah, then the question is, can you break the bash script into run commands here or not? Yeah. So the thing about you do that, right? you need to first copy the bash script into the data first. So which means you don't need to do a copy. And then run the file. You can do that. Hmm. But it means there's another layer of interaction. Whereas over here, the advantage is, look at the file, it's very clear what I'm installing. Whereas it isn't installed. Shell script or whatever, deep ending shell script. Twice inside there, but it's. Mm. Yeah, the better practice is to actually expose what is going on. Can. Okay. So we run. And then the next step is we do this. CMD. <coughs> so, what does this do actually? So, in every container, you always want to do something. For example, when you create a container, you want the container to do something, right? Either to start a server, to copy something or whatever. So this is the command that you want to run. Okay? When you start the container, what's the one command that you want to run? Here. So you specify CMD, the command that you want to run, because they don't accept spaces, so you comma then the version. So usually it's like that. Huh? Node space dash dash version, right? But because you can't put space here, so you put node then comma then the version argument. Okay? Ah, okay. So CMD, you can have multiple runs command, but you only can have one CMD in a Docker file. Okay, CMD is to specify the command to run when you start a container. So you only can have, usually one container is one process. So this process, what do you want to run it as? For right now, we do it as CMD. Run things to prepare the 
Mm. We can see that in action later. Ah, so for example, Node is uh, one example, but say that I want to install a new, so usually what you see a lot is cases like that. Run, and then you'll be run, app get, install, <coughs> wget, then curl, and then end, app get, clear cache or something like that. I've forgotten the command, but it's along that line. <laughs> huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes, yeah, correct. So it'd be get update. Ah. Uh. Well, because these layers might be shared later. Mm. Yes. So, so if I do everything in one, it's only one layer. So it's okay. You will see the reason why later. As much as possible, if you see a Docker file, you use, okay. Let's look at a live example. Huh? I think it will be easier to see a Docker file. Each, each layer is actually cached. Hmm. Mm. So it's it's actually cached. It's actually changed in that line. It actually recaches that layer. Oh. This is not a good example. So multiple layers means they will be fixed. It actually makes your... The more layer you have, the bigger your container you need to. This... Try to minimize it. Yeah. Usually everybody will put one in one run command. Yeah, but you can see there's also quite a few runs here. So, but the idea is, because like what Michael say, you want this to be in one layer. Okay, the I'll show you why it's so important to put this in one layer. Later when we do the Docker file, you, more you understand. But generally, you see the in all the Docker files outside, they are usually very big runs commands. Okay, and they are grouped logically. So this one is to install the system stuff. Then the next one is to install Node or whatever. So they are grouped logically. Okay. Okay. So right now. You are done with your first Docker file. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Make sure you have this. Then let's build our first Docker image. So go to your exercise folder. Exercise two. <coughs> So the new command you learn is now is docker build. Okay. So like everything else, we need to tag it. Okay. What should we tag it with? You can tag it with docker workshop. So let's call this. Let's call this image maybe node workshop. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh yeah, then do a dot. Okay, you need to do a dot. Okay. Yes. Why? Why the dot? Okay. The dot is to basically also tell where to find the Docker file. So right now we are in the current directory. So it's to tell Docker, hey, please build the image with dash t. Node workshop and where to find the Docker file, the context. Okay, so if you do this, you will start building. There you go. So you see how this happening? It's actually pulling down the different layers. If you have more layers, uh, it means it's going to take a lot longer to download this layer. Right? <coughs> uh, 
Okay, anybody don't see this screen? Oh. What do you all see? And I see the Docker file. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Mm, yeah, yeah. You have to go to exercise oh, two. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Who else cannot find? Who else cannot see? Are you in the correct directory? Unauthorized user, incorrect user, or password. Yeah. Wait, 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 what? Can I see yeah. your Docker demo? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you sign in. Oh, I sign out. Can you try sign out and see what happens? Okay, okay. But actually, technically speaking, shouldn't be an issue. Because when you pull, it's. Hmm. Or whatever name you want, something you interesting. If not, you could try pulling from another. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, no, it's not good. So, sign cannot pull. So, sometimes it's because the command line doesn't tally with the demon. So, in command line, you need to do a docker login, something, something. But that's you don't have to do that also because when pulling image, you don't have to login. Log yeah. yeah. So, I think there's something salah. Who else got issue? <coughs> okay, if you all want to go take a break and take a break again because it's <laughs> gonna take a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> ah, some finish idea. Oh, still, still doing. Okay. I think there's a sudden surge of people downloading. That's why it's like it's so slow. <laughs> So if you do Docker build again, you do not go to this version, but it's already the same thing. Yeah. So actually, if I need to use the same version of Node for something else, even without the Docker, I would need to download it again. So they don't even put that Docker, so they just use this good patch 8.11. What are we downloading? Are we downloading the latest? Yes, you actually, um, so you're downloading so right now what happens is you're downloading the node image with this tag, 8.11.3. So these things that you're seeing here are the layers inside the image. Not yeah. the stuff we wrote. Uh. Not the stuff we wrote, yeah. Because remember we do a from. The from part is the first, the first part where you see from. And then it understands that, hey, go and pull the thing. Yes. I'll just say if I already have node installed, but it, it wasn't installed. In the Docker. Yeah. Yes, because that is that is a system library on your local host. This is an image. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit different in that sense. So either way, I'll Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I do have a better solution to this. <laughs> you should have used the Alpine or something. <coughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't think we'll be using anymore. Yeah, la, we're using the fat one. That's why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> we're using the fat like fat. Yup. Not the slim unique. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Should I, like, no, la, don't cancel already. La. I'm already halfway there already. <laughs> Yeah, 
这里。This. PM. Oh shit! Oh, that one. Oh yeah. How's everyone? Is are uh, your doctor bill done? Done. Done. Anyone still waiting for download or anything? No. Yeah, waiting for download. Okay. You should see successfully tech note workshop latest. Okay, can no problem. So once it's done, you just type uh, Docker, uh, Docker, Docker images ls, Docker images ls. You should be able to see that extra container inside your list. You should also see the node container inside the list of containers. Oh, sorry, images rather, images. Just like Docker, uh, Docker images are less. Yeah. Docker image are less. No? Do you see this? Have you done downloading the... Do you you say, do you see successfully tech at the end of the message? Yeah. Mm. Missing? Okay. No, I can go. This one. 
Where's my... This one, this command. Uh, and? You also notice there is a node uh, container there, the tag is not in the top tree there. <coughs> all our container images, uh, even in future when we build the Docker uh, images, we all start from somewhere. So the from is where it starts from. Uh, it's kind of like uh, in Ultra, the programming in a way it inherits from. So it inherits a bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, everybody managed to see this? Right. Earlier, you said maintenance is only when Ah, okay. So if you notice that, that's not when we do docker build dash t and then node workshop, right? Then remember when I, earlier I said that if we didn't specify a tag, it always put latest? Yeah, it then. So this, this is what happened just now. So if we didn't specify a tag, it will just put latest for you. If you, can if you want to specify a tag, you can do it later. I'll show you how also to specify a tag. Then it can be something else besides latest. Okay? And then you see the difference in size. So from here, you can tell that the base image which is your 8.11.3 whatever we add on is only the difference that's essentially your npm libraries la, that makes the difference okay so now you know how to read the the size yeah so it doesn't mean that these two plus together is one over kick okay <coughs> Finish it? Wow. Not moving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <shag. laughs> you might need to go the Alpine way. Yeah, I'm still Yeah, you. Okay, <coughs> so right now, we can try to run the container, uh, the image that we just built. So we do a docker, run, node, workshop, okay? It's quite similar to the first command we, we run, uh, docker run hello world, right? But this time, we are running the image that we just built, okay? So when you run, you should see 8.11.3, right? So where does this come from? 8.11.3 is when we look at our CMD. So when we do a Docker run, the command that the containers know how to do, know what to do, is via the CMD. Hmm. Hence, the CMD, you can only have a CMD, one CMD in the entire Docker file. <coughs> okay? Because when you do a Docker run, this is the command that do this whatever command. Okay? Make sense? Okay. <coughs> Up to here, any questions? No? Okay? So, let's go to, okay, so another thing that we can do is we can do a docker run again, node workshop, but this time we want to override the 
CMD, right? We don't want to keep doing this node version thing. Okay, we can do it in the command line. You can do ls slash app. So what does this command do? It's basically run again the same image, but this time replace whatever the CMD with ls slash app. Okay, so if you run this, you should see a list of files in the container. Okay. How do you know these are in the container? It's because in your current local host, you don't have package dash log json and package.js. Okay, this one you should have, but not this one. And no modules. Okay, these are the two things you don't have. Okay. Okay, this is whatever that is running in the container. Okay. So if you do a docker ps dash dash all, you can see that now you have two stop containers. Correct? You should have seen. Okay. Both running image uh, node underscore workshop, but they are different commands. Okay, so this is how you build an image using Docker Build and how to run the image is do a Docker run the image name which spin off a container. Okay, uh, questions? Okay, if you all have the shower. Huh? Hmm. Should I do the copy? The last time, we, the last time we did was very slow. So, so the other thing that we can do is okay, like in many cases, especially for Java, for compiled language, is that after you compile, you want to pull something out. Like for Java, you have your dot jar, dot jar, or your wall file or whatever. So say that now we have, we have. We want to pull out the node modules and we want to pull out the package log.json from the container. How do we do that? Okay. How do we pull things from the container into our local host? Okay. So we can do this. Docker copy. So Docker CP the container ID. And then you specify where do you want to copy from. We remember our work directory is slash apps, right? Okay, you can copy the node modules. Okay. And then where you want to copy to? In my current directory. So remember you, do, you just do a double PS dash or you see the container ID. Containers that have stopped. And then you look at the container ID, which is the first column on the left. Maybe you can copy from the first first line. Um, yeah. So basically, that's telling you I'm going to copy stuff from inside there. So it's how you kind of like I have stuff that's already in the container that I have used before. And I want to just copy out. Say in this case, you're copying out the, the load module for, uh, folder. In other places, that could be like you have a log file that was created when you were generating you know, compiling, for example, in code. You want to copy out the result or the log file, right? So as well. Yeah. It's very helpful. Uh, okay. Yes. Hmm. Good question. And then you're done. Right now you should see a uh, if you do a ls dash a, you should see your node module here. Oh, each time I run one, it replaces. Oh, each time you run, it replaces. And then no version. 
Oh, can I see how you run the the previous command? No, no the your terminal. You press con you press up. Hmm. Again. Run workshop. Okay, run again. Okay, run this again. Okay, then Doctor PS dash dash. Ooh. Indeed. So wondering what I did wrong. Hmm. This is the first time I see this. No, this looks legit. Wow, this is. Why? What the? Um, I just downloaded from the for Mac. Oh, dash 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 dash. Is it? Is there a difference between one dash and two dash? Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> dash dash. Oh, <laughs> uh. for a minute I got so shocked. <laughs> okay. So right now, let's copy the log file. Do you want to do that? Okay, you try on your own. Okay. Log file. Package dash log. Package. Okay. If you want to see it. You can do the run it, list it out again, then copy it. Can? Okay. So copy out the log file. Obviously, you can see the readme and do it also lah. But try on your own. Okay. Anybody had problems? Oh, so cool. I see. I thought that one is like some Street Fighter game. Okay. Can copy the log file. Do you need the name of the log file? Anybody? Problems? Okay. Now. <coughs> okay. So now we move on to exercise three. Okay, let's install a web server. Okay, to serve our our HTML or Node stuff. <coughs> So right here, we can do a run. npm install dash g. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to say expose ATAT. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay, 
So again, the first one, I think this one is quite clear what we are trying to do. Again, run. Please run this command in the container. Expose. What does expose do? Okay, expose is like maintainer like that. It doesn't do anything but to inform the developer that this image requires this port to be exposed. That's all. It's like maintainer, it doesn't, Docker doesn't do anything with it, but it provides information of what this image ports to be exposed for. Okay? Can? Okay? You all know what's ports, right? Just checking. Shit. I don't know. <laughs> because I'm very quiet. Ah, okay. Suddenly so quiet, I was like, hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, then now, right now, we do the same command. Huh? Oh, yes. Oops. So we have to change the CMD to this. <coughs> Keep forgetting stuff. Okay. HTTP server slash app. Then please open the port at 8080. Okay. This is the command. Okay. <coughs> so now Docker, <coughs> same thing, ah. Uh. Docker build dash t node workshop. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so the difference is you notice that that this word using cache, right? So Docker realized that eh, the previous layer is the same, exactly the same thing. So Docker said, okay, don't, don't need to do this again. I already have that layer. So that's why you have different layers. And that is why in other Docker files, the run are so big also. Because if there's nothing changed, it will not run everything again. Okay? <coughs> so that's why you use cache, use cache. And two, they notice that where? up to date ah then you install then you just add stuff okay okay so this time we can run this so docker run dash p 8080 8080 Okay. So what this do is the same thing, but this time we add something called dash p. Dash p is to tell the Docker please open up port 8080 on the container and map it to your local host 8080. If you all use VirtualBox before, this is port forwarding. Okay. Then you get to see now you have uh, available on something something, and then you can see, and then you get to see your to do list. Okay. This is basically the app that's inside the app. Oh, sorry, the app. Your current folder. Okay. So the beauty about this is that if you have no node ever installed on your computer, you still can run node stuff. Okay? If you have Ruby, you can use an image or whatever. Yeah, let's check it out and then run. So that's the beauty about Docker. So it kind of keep your host very clean. Otherwise, if you all have multiple versions, then it's kind of like you have to use RVM and I don't know, uh, Node.js have 
something else lah, NVM or something. So you have so in this way you can have very clean cuts. Okay. So this is your running app. Okay. Anybody not see this? Okay, good. So next thing to try to do is open a new uh, terminal app and type Docker PS. See what happens. Ah. Yeah. So instead of having nothing like what we did just now, mm -hmm. we now actually have one container that's still running. So because a container just started, it's still it's still around. It's not it's not been removed yet. It's not stopped yet. It's still it's still lingering around. So if we do Docker P Docker PS Docker container list, it's actually still there. Shows it that it's actually the same port in uh, AT, AT and other stuff. So it's different from the previous uh, the Docker runs that we did where you start, it does something and goes away. Right? But this one is just actually lingers around because our command makes it linger around, which we start the, start the server and it stay around. Kind of like call Apache or Internet stuff, same thing. Let's say we have a question. So when you post it, it has something from the name. Is that just like. You mean this one? Yeah, this is Kin Babbage. Um, it's just basically auto generated so that it keeps the name unique. Yeah. You can overwrite it. The figure you can get out by doing Docker run dash dash help. So you how to do it. Okay. So congrats, you guys just have a first image created and running it. Okay. So <coughs> Oh, okay, you can ignore this. Next. So this, this thing that uh, we are going through right now, it's good for development. So right now, say that you want to change something in the source code, right? You can either go to your Visual Studio, change it, run the build again, then run the container. Okay, for example, uh, if you want to change something, right, in the index, My God. Okay. Okay. So to do this, what you need to do is essentially do the Docker build again. Then let everything run through. Basically, you all get the gist of it, right? Then run this again. Right. Remember to stop the container first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then you see, we, 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 we. Do you see the top? Yeah. Okay. So, say that this process is very tedious, right? Because you have to keep doing this. So, there's a way to mount it. Okay. So, this is what exercise 4 is about. Okay. This time, we can mount the container. Mount the folder. This one. Okay. So what this does is, same thing, docker run. You can try also. Huh? Because since you're using Mac, this is very good to use. <laughs> For Windows, I don't know. Windows is painful, but can be used, but very painful. Okay, this is back tick. Okay, the one above the tab. Okay. PWD, then close back tick. Okay. Yeah, we send a present working directory. Yeah. Which folder you are in right now? Okay. So what this does is telling Docker, please mount my current uh, directory to the app directory in the container, and also open port eighty eighty with this image run. It is not Docker Workshop. Okay. Can. So once you do this, same thing. Nothing changed, right? But if you change your source code now, so if you go to your source code and change to remove VVV, then if you rerun this again, it reflects automatically. Oh, just yeah. Yeah. 
So it's like mounting your system folder directly to the container. Okay. Can do you all manage to do the mounting? Once mounted, you all can change anything in the index HTML or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Okay, just see that the re the changes get reflected. <coughs> Did anybody haven't reached this stage yet? Mount it. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so to escape the container, press Ctrl C. I think if you should have known by this, uh. okay. Then the next one. So say that now you want to enter into the container, right? You don't want to let the container run by itself. You want to go inside the container. So you can run this command, the same command. Okay. You press up in your and then you type bash. Okay. So once you do this, hey. Touch on my tag. Huh? Yeah. Oh, of course. <clears throat> I missed out something. The most important command. IT. Yes, dash IT. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering wait, what the. Okay, dash, you must put dash IT. Okay, dash IT stands for interactive terminal. Okay, you want an interactive terminal, dash IT, then you mount your folder, then you do the port. Tell which image you want to run, and then the bash. Bash is like the terminal shell script. Shell. Shell, shell. shell. Then you should see something root at blah, 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 blah. Slash apps. Right? Okay. Remember, we specify our work directory to be slash apps. So that's also, this is what it's for. When you enter into the container, it will bring you to your, your uh, work directory. So that's why it's in slash apps first. Okay, right now, whatever you do inside here is in the container. You delete stuff, whatever is inside the container. So it doesn't affect your local host. Actually, right now it does because it's mounted. Okay? <laughs> yes, oops. Uh. Okay. If it's not mounted, then you can do whatever inside the container. Ah, okay. It's kind of like in the VM world, you like SSH into like the remote VM or something. Like this. It's exactly the same. Mm. You're, logging in, you're logging in into a container. Uh, so in this case, why is this good for? Because sometimes you want to debug stuff. You want to run other commands besides HTTP server. Then how do you do that in a container? This is a good way to do that. Okay? Go inside the container and run whatever you need to run. So you can run the Server running, I don't know what, what version of Node is in there, so I can log in. So this is the equivalent of online. Yeah. Yes, correct. You are doing SSH session, kind of like SSH session. You're logging into the container. And you're logging as root. <coughs> okay. Any questions about here? Yes. So, what happens? What's the difference between mount and not mount? Hmm. To mount means that whatever change you do on your local host will also reflect 
in the container and vice versa. So right now, here, if I do a touch, test.txt, right, I'm creating a file in the container, right? But if I look at here, I should have the test.txt also, correct? Whatever you do in the container reflects. Yes, that's because you mount the folder. If you don't mount anything, you will not see anything on your localhost. Can? So, like for example, we are doing coding or whatever, we should mount it and then do it. Yes, like correct. Yes. R rather than going through the build process, you know, build the image or this. So you don't have that, you don't have to go through that process every time you change your source code. Exit, Control D. Okay, and then now you are back to your local host. I mean your host computer. Okay. Okay. So for more stuff you can read the reference here. Okay? Exercise three. Okay. Should I take Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe fifteen minutes. Is it too much? Too little? Okay. Hey, finish it. Five, right? Okay. Can the first part? The yeah. Share the folder. Yes, yes. Uh, it depends also whether is it the home or pro. Home or pro, yes. Because two box, then you need to map the folder in the VM, the virtual box. So there's, there's another thing to it. If, if you do that, uh, and then you are in WSL, it's okay. But you're not in WSL, then you need the PWD to lower. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah, Windows has a ton of very weird behavior, right? <laughs> Actually, it's, it was well, like when Kimmy was like, wow, yes, I think it's here. Yeah, that's straight ahead. I was like, why have you put your Mac? Was like, good. Yeah. Because I want to go and get like copies. I don't know my first time here, I'm sorry. Oh, I cannot help you. Oh, 
Uh, I don't know leh. Eh? He's the staff, right? I don't. <coughs> you can ask him. Sorry. I think she, she needs to get out of the building. Yes. <coughs> you got a mouth deny? Wait, where are you now? Exercise too? Yeah. Are you um, Oh, do you, why uh, you need what hmm, what do you need to do? No no that was just testing. Just oh. go up and just do oh. back tick, right? Oh my god. So usually we only do this in Ah, okay. So another thing is that there's some folders that you cannot uh, mount. Okay. Usually you have to mount in your home directory. Okay. So right now you're in uh, application mem directory. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, right. So you need to, if you mount it on your home directory, it works. Okay. So there's some permission issues that uh, Docker. Docker is not. La, yeah, because you definitely don't want to mount your system files into the container also. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. So, you need to... Um, okay. Oh. Okay, let's move this. Yeah. Let me close this up. I go up one layer, then open it again. Can we put this in your... Again, again, again. Okay, put exercise. Okay, all of them. Uh, huh? Okay. Hey, wait, wait, then go out another layer. Sorry, I don't know how to use the open and then put this one. Can we put inside your home home folder? Yes. Uh, where where do you wanna put? Hey, you got one already, ma? Yeah. Oh, but I override. Yeah, can can can. But actually, it's like because my my M M M A M P uh, is under my home directory. Your M A M P. Yeah, just not the one you say. Uh, oh, the. Yeah. Oh. You uh, map it directly into your yeah. yeah. Wow, so fierce, ah. Okay, so, okay. So, so, hmm. I see. Wait, you mean you map everything inside here, inside your directory? No lah. This one only got here. What? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Intro to Docker Workshop only. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Override. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Okay, maybe I can change this. I don't know whether do you have something lah. Okay. Let's put this as V1 lah. Okay. That's for then, eh, hey, where's the other? Open this again. And I drag this one in now. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So now, eh, hey, wait. Why is it a? Uh, oh, you need to, you need to copy. You cannot straight away to drag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you just how to sorry. just uh using yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Please. Oh, okay. Okay, then right here you can go to your home directory Docker all oh, intro Docker workshop exercise two Okay, then here you can run the command again. Docker. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So the means uh, I straight away. Yes, you can do. Do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> when you mount the, when you mount a directory, you go inside interactive mode. Are you always automatically removed? Yes. So that's quite dangerous. Yes. So that's why um, it's actually a security flaw when you try to mount the system root. Because then, Docker yeah. has no difference of namespace. Yeah. So your root in the container also is a root in your your host. Yeah. I think that's why that's why Linux by default you can't run any Docker commands without sudo. Oh yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, but that's 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 it's it's, it's a it's a, not something you want to bog them down with. Yeah yeah yeah. Correct. <laughs> then there's also questions like, what if you have both both 
folder also same name. Then you mount which one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then that one is another story. Uh, but that one you all can also go and find out. It's a lot more com complex yeah. than yeah. is needed. Still yes. Got Still got. Sorry. To get this, the trouble is the V. Uh. Oh, you cannot. Okay. Uh, can I see your Docker file? Looks legit to me. This one. Uh. <laughs> this is gonna cause a problem. So inside here, PWD dot lower. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> capital T oh, no, inside inside the grave. Okay. Oh. Two lower. Uh, it has to be capital T, capital L. Okay, okay. Capital T. Interesting. Oh. Uh, capital L. Uh, no, no underscore. Okay. O W E R then bracket. Brackets, uh. Yeah. Let's enter. Dude, it's not it cannot lie. It's not movie, <laughs> bro. Substitution line to it. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it runs. It runs and then but your Interesting. How are you running your Mac then? What? You're yes. running in a volume, is it? Different volume? Uh? Yeah, different volume. Oh. Uh, because hmm. Docker requires the, the file directory, the reference, to be all in lower two weeks. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> oh, so your work is in one volume, then your system file is in another volume? Yeah. Uh, System file is the main volume, then my work, work file is the ah. one separate one. Oh. That, that's, that's a command that you have to do in Win 10 Home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, going back to this slide, right? When not to use Docker? Yes. And do not have CI CD in case it's one of the ideas. Why? why uh? Because. If you don't have CI CD in place, right, you can push to the registry, everybody can push to the registry. Then how, how do you know which is the latest? Then you, when you do the build process, you want everything to be automated also. So sometimes people might change the build process. Yeah. So you are saying that if you use Docker, we must have CI CD? It's not, it's not a must, but it's a really good to have. Yeah. Because if you don't have CI CD in place, right, the next thing is you can push to the registry. Say that you push one image, then I push another image. So if you all name it node underscore workshop latest, so which one should we take? Well, then if, if just one person is maintaining the... Ah, then yeah, like, if it's one person, if you're the only developer in the team that runs this whole, then, then it shouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. But that's when you have more than one then in the team, then that could be an issue. Yeah. Unless you can coordinate really well la, between uh, team members, yeah, it's a good to have la, But it's it's just more like you'll be quite dangerous if in a team you don't have this in place. That's all. Mm. So basically, to maintain the Docker file, mm -hmm. you can check into Git. Yes. And it's faster in Linux, I think, right? Is it? It's faster, it's more convenient in Linux. Yeah, as compared to Windows. Mm. Because of the Linux kit? Mm. Because actually, the underlying Docker requires a lot of uh, Linux tools which empowers Docker. So that's why Windows, when you want to run Windows, what they do is that they actually run like a virtual box. Then, then put the container inside that virtual box, then the window user can see. It's that way. Mm. But if you are running Mac, okay, la, not an issue. You have colleagues that use Windows, is it? Uh, there's one that uses Linux. Ah. Mm, but Windows is a bit more tricky. Can work lah, doesn't mean cannot work. It's just still a bit of permissions but things that you need to take care of. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Still can work. Yes. 
So in terms of performance, does Docker run faster in Linux system than Mac and Windows? Does Docker run faster in Linux system than... You're talking about does development purpose or production purpose? Development. Development purpose. Ah. I think for development, I don't think it's a lot of difference. Lah. Because yeah. the container is almost agnostic to what you're doing. Yeah. It's just how you're setting up the container that becomes a bit trickier. But the container itself is fairly agnostic. So anything you run within the container should be fine. It's depend on how good your laptop is, not really what OS you're using for that. The Windows Farm system performance is quite noticeably slower than Linux. Uh, but Windows. Oh. Yes. You try to use Shopify yeah. on uh, Windows this and just, you just copy like my uh, files. You see it's more easily stored than Windows. That's a very good question. Because <laughs> I was like thinking, like, huh? Yes. Yeah. Then how? How to link everything together, right? Yeah. Yes. That's a very good question. So, uh, so in the in the world of Docker, uh, that's where you have to spin up multiple containers and then link them up together. Okay. Um. To okay. Maybe I will explain to the class. Do you have enough time to finish all the lessons? No. For sure, no. That's what you can do. Yeah, but they cannot like it. Yeah. Three, three, okay? Okay, then I faster start. <coughs> okay, so somebody asked the question what if we have database and what we have um, other requirements, right? Because when you run Node, you don't only run Node per se. You have your database, you have your Redis, you have whatever, whatever, right? Okay. To begin with, okay, I can share my experience. When I first started learning Docker, what I do, or uh, what my colleague, my ex-colleague used to tell me to do is, you install everything in one container first. Get used to Docker first. Okay? So you have your node, uh, your node uh, image, right? You can go inside there and install your database, whatever. Everything in one image. So everything works as if it's containerized in one one. Okay? So that's a good way to start. Okay, and that's a good way to learn to get yourself familiar with more Docker stuff. Okay, use the run, whatever, whatever. But after you are familiar with it, you should move out from this kind of behavior to different containers. So you have Node running in one container, MySQL running in another container, Redis running in another container, and then you link all of them up. Okay, so that's the angle that you're looking forward to but to make it easier you can for the start you can put everything into one image first okay that's the journey I would that's, that's the journey that I took lah. or you can just jump the gun and split many also can okay but the angle is to have every service as one container can? okay the reason why it's also good because once you have every service in a container Especially for your web part, you can scale easily. I say that I want three containers, and then I can scale the three web containers up. But if you have everything in one container, how you can you scale? You cannot scale because it's everything in one. Okay. The rule of thumb is that each container uh, should only run one process. Mm. One process, which means in this case, one container for a web server, one container running Postgres, one container running Redis, and all this stuff. So one process. Uh, yes. Okay. So, in exercise three, we are going to touch about touch a little bit on how can we link containers together. Okay. Is the pre okay? Have you heard before Docker Compose? Heard of this term or not? Yeah. Okay. So Docker Compose is the angle that you want to go for, where you can spin up multiple containers and linking them up all together, okay? But what exercise 3 teach you is the 
underlying of Docker Compose. Okay, what actually Docker Compose is using? Okay, actually Docker Compose is you have Docker and then you have Docker Compose on top of Docker. So what exercise three is to teach you what is the the underlying core of Docker Compose. Okay, so now obviously the first one we go to it's okay. Scenario one is you want to make your containers talk to one another. Okay, like your Node.js have to talk to your MySQL. Okay, so how do we do that? By default, Docker has this pre-built thing called Docker Network. So if you are do a Docker Network LS, and then you can see a lot actually. Okay, Docker Network LS. So by default, Docker has essentially two or three, three, three types of network. Have you all used VM before? You know bridge. You can bridge. You can have a network bridge. You can have a net. And you can uh, many type of network. So essentially, by default, Docker use bridge. Okay, it's a way to build networks together. Okay. Okay. Next. This time, let's run a Postgres on our own. Oh. You want to take some time to download? I should go through this first before giving you all the break. <laughs> OK, so now let's run this. You all got the command in the readme? Exercise 3. Is there a skinny version we can download? Hmm. Good question. Let's see. Hmm, Docker for Postgres, not too sure. Ah, yes, you do have a skinny version. Okay, 10.4 Alpine. Okay, let's try that. 10.4 Alpine. A L P H is it? Oops. moment of truth. Oh, still so big. Okay. Okay, while this is running, right? I can explain a few things. Do you see dash E? Dash E is a way to tell Docker, please pass this environment variable with this value. Okay? Can? So when you run a container, you also can pass in environment variables. And say that we don't want Docker to randomly give us a name, we can do a dash dash name equal to PG. Then after that, if you notice, there's a command called dash D. Dash D is to tell Docker, please run it in the background as a daemon. Okay? Have any of your downloaded finished already? No, not yet. Okay. Okay. So right now, if you do a Docker PS, we should see this. Okay, the Postgres image running. That's out of curiosity. What's the image size for this? Oh, it's seventy-two meg only. Not bad. As compared to the fat one, it's two hundred and thirty-four meg. Okay, so that's the difference between Alpine and the uh, Fed version. Uh. Okay. Ah, remember the other time when uh, Michael was suggesting do the prune? Okay. When you do a Docker, Docker image prune or Docker prune image, either one of them, 
it will remove things like that. So what happened is, why you have none, none, right? You, you, you all should have some of this also actually, if you do a Docker images, okay? It says that because every time when you do the Docker build node, uh, Docker build node workshop, every time you build one, it will give you a new image ID. Then previously you have the latest, right? So they will remove this text and give you the latest one. So essentially, these are actually your previous version of your images. That's all. But you can only have one image name and one tag uniquely across all. Okay? Can? That's FYI. Oh. Ah, then you do the Docker shit prune image. Let me try. Ah, I don't know. I don't remember the command. Yes. Warning, please, you will remove all dangling image. Yes. Oh. Does it not work? Eh? Hmm. I'll get back to you why the prune is not working. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a, a switch. I think it's a, uh, there's a, there's a switch. That's where use help. Remove, oh, oh no, not all unused image. If you need the command, I can give you other command. I have a short shortcut. But this one later, okay? okay. okay let's focus on the... I'll get back to you on the, the thing. <laughs> okay, so you all should have this running. Do you all see Docker PS? You all see this? PG? Wait. Okay, so now what we want to do is every time you run Docker, you have a container IP address. Okay, to grip it, basically you do this. The, go and look at the readme, copy, Docker inspect. You look at the, then you paste the container ID. And then you basically grab for this. Uh, value called IP address. So right now you have the IP address of the container. So let's try to talk to the container. Okay? To talk to the container, we can do this. So docker run, again docker run. Dash IT. Busy box is another image name basically. Okay? And then you ping. Ping what? Ping the IP address. Ah, oh, which oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very small, very small. This one is damn small. <laughs> ah, voila. Ah, <laughs> very small. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So what you're seeing right here is basically we are running another container talking to the PG container using ping. Okay. So when we can ping each container means that these two containers are actually on the same network. <coughs> Get it? Can? Okay. So this tells you that basically when you run anything, Docker containers on your local host, these containers are all in the same network. Okay? If you run another node or another content or another image, they are all on the same network. So essentially all of them are able to talk to one another. Okay? Okay, but the troublesome thing is there's no DNS resolution. 
basically, if I want to talk to the container, I need to know the IP address. Without the IP address, I cannot talk to the container, right? But it would be good if I can say, talk to container PG, rather than the IP address, right? Okay? And then there's no isolation. Meaning that whatever I spin up in Docker, all the containers are on the same network. What if I want only these containers to be in this network, isolated from the rest? How do I do that? Okay? So, basically we need to use this thing called a user-defined bridge network. Okay? Just to sum up through, all these are basically what Docker Compose actually do at the background. Okay? So if you are going to use Docker Compose, you can go through this also. But it's a pain. Uh. Okay? But that's for knowledge purposes. So right now, let's create the test network. Okay? Docker network create test net. Okay, how to see that we have the network is Docker, network, LS. You should see a testnet. Okay. Okay, then we can stop the previously run uh, container. So Docker stop PG. And let's remove it also. Docker remove. Okay. okay. Then it's removed. Okay. So Docker stop. Docker remove the container. So right now we shouldn't have a container running. Okay. This part, everybody know what we are doing. Okay. Good. Okay. Next, let's create this time the same container. So docker run, the environment name, the name of the container. But this time we add the test network. Okay, we are linking this container, this container to this network called test network. Okay? And then we run the the shit, where is it? What's the name of the content the one that I built? Okay. <laughs> Post grass ten point four. Okay. So basically you do this. Done. Can? So at this point uh, everybody understand what we are doing. Again I clarify run the use the environment variable, the name of the container, but this time we add something new is the dash net. Uh, dash network, dash dash network. We specify the test network. Okay, the network that we just created. Okay. And any anybody not following yet? Good. Then this time we can run the busy box again. So this time when we run the busy box. We also have to attach the BusyBox to the same network, right? Because we want BusyBox and the Postgres container to be on the same network. Okay, then we do an NS lookup. Okay? Hmm? Oh, wait. Test net. Hmm. Oh, but they give me the IP address. Yeah. I don't know why there's no answer. It's like so shocked. But but you notice that it does give me the IP address. Correct. So what we did here is instead of finding the IP address out like what we did the inspect for the Docker uh, container IP address. This time we can just do a lookup to PG. 
right? So now we have the, the domain name called PG, and PG maps to this IP address. Okay? So that's how we're going to link containers up next time. Okay? We declare the container that we want to link to via the name of the, the name of the container. Okay, so basically there's other, uh, a lot more Docker networks that you all can go and read about. If you all want to explore the different parts. I have an ex colleague that used to run, that can play multiplayer on Docker containers across two different hosts. I've I forgotten how he do it, but he managed to do it. That's where he deal with all this network stuff. But you can do that also, okay? Unless you want to dig in and see how it does, okay? Okay, next thing. So every time when we run a container, okay, it's when you run the container, you stop it. Oh, okay, actually we got example. Okay, so let's say that you run this. Okay, right now again we run dash IT interactive terminal we name it call text test box. Then busy box is the image. SH is the shell. And now we are inside the container. Okay, in the container we do a touch. Test dot text is it? Okay. So basically we have a test dot text, right? Okay. And then now we control D to exit the container. Okay? Can? Have your uh, 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 is everybody following? Yes. Okay. Just want to check. I scared I'm going too fast. Okay? So this time we start the con the same container that we stop. Okay. Okay? We start. And then this time we go into the container. Okay, so this is another way to go into the container. When we have a running container, and then we want to enter into the running container, we do a Docker e exec dash it the name of the container. Okay, and then we do a ls. So right here, you still can see the container, right? You still can see your test.txt. That means whatever you create in the container, when you stop it, and then you start it again, whatever you create is still there. Okay? Did this point you understand? Yes? Uh, what's the difference between uh, this and uh, when you're mounted? When you're mounted, when you're mounted, it means that you're mounting your host into the container. But what happens here is we went to the container and create a file. And put it inside the... Uh, put inside the container. the container. Yes. And then, but is this, this test of text, right, is not in our local host at all. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we do. That's the difference. Mounting is you bring whatever stuff into the container or vice versa. Whatever the container has, you also put it into your local host. Okay. But this one is a one-way traffic, lah, essentially. Okay. So notice that the thing is still there. But if we delete the container, everything is gone. Make sense, right? Because everything is in a container. But what if we want something to persist across whatever container that we create? A good example would be you want to spin up database, right? You cannot be always using the same container. What if your computer crash? Then your, co then your container gone, all your data gone, right? You want it to persist somewhere else. So that's why we use this thing called Docker volume. Okay. 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 So to use Docker volumes, okay, this is managed by Docker. Okay. It's, mean, it's meant to decouple the host and the container. So you can, okay, basically you can use, if you are Azure, you can use Azure. La. But if you don't have, then use your own. La. Okay. 
and then it's by mouse. It mouse your actually it mouse one of the container into a folder that managed by Docker. So you don't know where it's being mounted to. You can you can specify or you can check where is it mounted to. But Docker manage this for you. So when you specify a volume, it creates a volume. It mounts the container to the volume. And this volume is somewhere in your local host. So that even though you restart the computer, you do whatever, lah, the data will still be there. Okay. Okay, there's actually three types of volume. Okay. Memory, I don't this is only for Linux only. Lah. Okay, it's good for containers that runs a lot of secrets. That once the container is or the volume is gone, or once you kill off the container, the, the volume will also die together. Also. Okay, so to create volume, we can do a Docker volume create. Okay. So Docker volume create the volume name. To list the volume, oh, you see I got quite a few, lah, but <coughs> okay, you should have one called test volume. Alright. So if you if you don't okay, so you have a test volume. Then you can inspect the volume. Okay, if you really want to know where it is, your mouth point. This is on your local host. <coughs> okay. There's actually quite a few more options you want also. Like if you really want to be inner about it, there's a read only or read and write, whatever access you can yeah, you can set to the volume also. If you are want to. Okay. Okay, so this time let's mount the volume. So again, docker run, dash it. Remember last time we do the backtick pwd, right? So if you do a backtick t, but uh, if you specify the, the file path, right, you mount the file path. But if you specify thus the name of the volume that you created, right, then you mount that volume, okay? So you mount it to test app, okay? So what is dash dash rm? Dash dash I means that once I exit the container, remove it also. Because right now, whatever that we do, we exit the container, it does stops, right? But it doesn't remove. So dash dash I am to, is to say that please remove it also. Okay? So the rest is quite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we go to the app. Okay, this is the place that we mounted, right? Mount the volume to slash app. Okay, and then we create a file. Okay. Okay, then now we exit. Wait. Wait. What happened? Okay. Oh, I pressed too many times already. Okay, so basically now I don't have the... Okay, I still have busy box. Okay, let me stop it. I think this is another busy box. <coughs> hmm. Anyhow, it's still there, but I don't know why it cannot... Oh, it stopped. Okay, so the next thing is... Because we kill off the container already, right? Supposedly everything is gone. But this time we want the data back. So we can remount it. <coughs> oh. So basically docker run, again dash it the same. Mount the test volume to the app. Okay. 
and then show me whatever is inside the apps folder. Okay. There you go. Okay. That should have a test or text. So that's how you persist data across containers. Okay. Which will be very useful when you need stateful stuff like your database. Yes. Oh, this is a new content. This you are running a new one, right? Oh, so it's removing the new one. Uh. Yes. This one is. This one is when you run this command, you spin up a container. So you remove yeah. Remove whatever that you just started. Correct. Okay. So, volume, network, DNS. The name of the container. Okay. Okay. So using by by mount is using your PWD. That's the difference. Okay. So one is you can mount your own local host folder. One is you can mount the volume itself. You create a Docker volume and then you mount it. Okay. There's two different way. Okay. So take note that if there's an existing file in the container. You'll be hidden away. Okay, this will only be good if you need to populate stuff into your container immediately when you want to mount stuff. So let's say that example you have Postgres, right? Essentially, Postgres is a folder somewhere in either slash var, slash data, PG data or something. So you can actually take this file out. Then you want to start a new container, right? You can mount this thing into the new container. So that's also how you move the data around between containers. Or you want to pre-populate your new database with data. That's also one way to do it. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So basically, exercise three is a intro to the concept that Docker Compose is going to use. So I'm not going to go through exercise four, but essentially, what you need to do it's this. Okay, very quick run through it. Volumes, right? Okay, you can mount your Volume, you see, this is what we are doing. Is we are mounting the data into the container Postgres data. That's how we populate data in. Okay, you open what ports? Please go and open this port. Okay, ports you all should be quite familiar with. Please pass in what environment variables, because when you start a container, sometimes you want to pass in environment variables. Okay. So in running Postgres, the prerequisite to running the container is to pass in two environment variables, basically the user and the password lah, to log into your database. Okay. And then this one is running your image. Command is remember you have the CMD. Remember we build a Docker image. We have this CMD. This overrides that image CMD. Okay. Then depends on means that. Please spin up my database before you spin up my web. That's it. Okay, so there's a sequence. Okay, then environment variable is still the same. Okay, and basically this thing called Docker Compose YML will spin up the networks. So in your web. You can call db slash five four three two, and then you will call this db. You know you all have a database URL. Do you know database URL? Shit. Okay. <laughs> so basically, database URL is a variable that you need for your web application to connect to your database. Ah, uh, so it's a URL. I think go no. 
So it's a basically it's a URL la, with the username, password, then the database name. Yeah. So basically this is that. Connection string. Ah, connection string. Yes, correct. Connection string. Okay, so you can try this at home. Good luck. So yeah, just create a new file for Docker Compose or whatever else and just copy and paste it. So all the things that you've been doing in the command line, that all the like, or oh, expose this port, whatever, 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 all those things you put in the command line uh, can now exist inside this Compose file, which is a very declarative way of doing it. And you scroll down for now, you all need to just run the Docker Compose up, you basically start the whole thing. And it, here we have two containers that are actually making them talk to each other. And they're using a shared network, which means they can address each other just by their uh, container name, in this case DB and web. Right, so, so it's in this case, so you scroll down later, the data part of exercise form, uh, there's a whole bunch of instructions like how to set your database up, uh, and how to start both containers together. Uh, and basically, this is basically running a, a, a Rails application. Uh, and then you have a Rails application running, and you have two containers, one container with Rails, one container with first Postgres, and then the, basically the Rails container will just talk to the, the uh, talk to the other container by back the database and everything. Yeah. So then you have a fully fully running Rails and uh, Ruby and Rails environment just in containers, and you don't need to do anything on your local machine. So which is something interesting. Like what you did just now with Node, you have uh, Node running on your machine without even having to install uh, Node on, uh, on your Mac. Right? So, it's so you can run this trace on your own, uh, because we are also out of time. Yeah, of course, you can still hang around a bit longer if you like to try to go through this. It's very fast, so every half hour, you can do it very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but of course, then again, our network gets not very good, so we may not have to download. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, so I think the best is go home and try it out, because the network is going faster and better. Uh, if you guys have any questions about Exercise 4, you uh, can ping us on the Facebook group or on, on Slack. We are all, uh, mostly on, all of us on Slack. Yeah, we have a Slack group uh, on CopyJS where you can go uh, hang out and look for us.